Now I think that uh, that at least the last two generations, uh, guys don't, wouldn't even consider that they would they it's uh, unless you're a, uh, unless you're a rapper like maybe not in, maybe not in rock or like metals is uh, a lot of metal is cucked. I hate to say it, but a lot of new metal is very very yeah. Cucked. Well, uh, it seems like what rock and roll always did was very inherently beta because everybody goes in, in this world seemingly from paying their dues to being superstars overnight with a record deal, even if it takes a while to get those first few records off the ground. And it seemed like the rock and roll world became famous. These guys go from forming a group and becoming people that, that are, are noteworthy overnight um, from, you know, from playing in clubs there, nobody gives a shit about them. And it seems like when they become somebody overnight, they're like, now let's really, really bend over backwards and appeal to women. The girls like the love songs. Whereas, you know, you can remember Tupac saying, I remember before my big break, I'm in the club by myself. Can't even get a woman to look at me a year later after my record deal. I can't keep women off of me. And mm -hmm. rappers are just not full of shit. It's not a full of shit culture. So, mm -hmm. you know, early on people were really appalled by rap calling women bitches and hoes but it, the reason for it is because these guys got a first-hand taste of i'm nobody i'm unappealing to you but as soon as i get a record deal now the same women that wouldn't look at me twice are are chasing me yeah. and they're they're just they're just very honest about it um i also don't really see anything wrong with saying bitches and hoes because mm. it, good women know it doesn't apply to them and there's not many good women out there just like there's not many good men out there and i think my justification for saying that 90 percent of women are trash is 90 percent of people are trash so you do the equation on that yeah it, it just is what it is 90 percent of people are trash 90 percent of people in general are not rollo tomasi who sees one youtube video and is like here kev let's fucking put your whole show on which i appreciate very much and i yeah. want to thank you publicly yeah. for that yeah of course so well, you you do the math when you factor in between both genders you're hanging around bars you're hanging around nightclubs you're hanging around shady places nine times out of ten uh, you're not going to be lucky enough to meet the love of your life it's it's not going down that way that's just realism and living in the real world yeah yeah and it seems to me like you can be a little bit more real um i don't know maybe it's just simply the West, the culture right now like western culture, or even like global glo uh, sort of this globalizing internet culture i don't even know really what to call it right now but it seems like if you you can get away with more as a rap artist than you could as a a, a rock artist you know i don't even want to really want to call it rock you know because what is it right now but I think that there's a different standard that we hold um, that will hold like say our like a, a lead singer for a band to that we won't hold like um, a, a rapper to right I mean it's because he's just out there you know talking about whatever it is that is sort of affecting him at that particular time and you don't have to I don't do, now correct me for a moment maybe maybe you disagree maybe you don't but um like do you think that um, that like uh, rap, uh, like rappers have more leeway in that sense as opposed to like getting canceled? Right. Or yeah, like having the woke mob sort of come after them. Like, would they be more after, you know, wanting to go after a, a guy who's sort of like a red pill rapper versus a guy who's like a red pill front man for a band? I think most rap is just inherently red pill by design. And mm -hmm. that's why I say my content is not peppered with red pill terminology because there's there's really no need for it i mean rap in and of itself in most cases unless they do that you know that love song just to you know stay on the charts and, and stay good with their female audiences like a drake or something like that it just is inherently as far as what the subject matter is is red pill and calls out hypergamy and calls mention to the experience that these guys had of being nobodies and then becoming superstars overnight and now all of a sudden women are all over them but i think nobody is above cancel culture these days so they come after a little bit of everybody but yeah generally it just seems maybe it, more than anything it's a musical difference i mean can you imagine instead of def leppard doing hysteria it was def leppard bitches ain't shit you'd kind of just be like yeah. oh, like i don't yeah. know yeah it, would, it doesn't seem like that would be like even the motivation at that point but i mean we're also yeah. talking like what 30 years of generational difference there too it's also but. maybe just not it maybe just not as pleasantly sung you know um there's a few maybe more <laughs> than 90s rock songs there's a few of them about being like played by women and things like that but it's also just a lot of these lyrics aren't so pleasantly sung a uh, part of the reason i can't write uh rock songs i can't i, I tried for so long before i switched over to rap and rap as it stands for rap is just rhythm and poetry and mm -hmm. I'm better as a poet that could just uh, rhythmically bring it, the, the poem off the page. And, and it's a different writing style when it's notes that need to be held for an extended period of time. It's, it's not something I have a talent for. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I see a lot of um, I see a lot of guys who I kind of under, I, I, I understand why they're on like fresh and fit. Like I know that six nine is on is coming up pretty oh soon, which is a big deal for them. 
Um, yeah, and, and maybe you can help me like understand like why is there such a controversy over that guy? What is what's the big deal with with having? Oh, him? I don't keep up with him. I mean, as everything that I'm into, even though rap is like music of the youth, I, I'm not really up to date on nearly any modern music. Some mm -hmm. underground stuff, but for the most part, everything I listen to is like what my parents listen to um, mm -hmm. in terms of rock music, and then rap is like '90s, some early 2000s, uh, some underground. Six nine. It's a gang affiliated controversy. It's a cloud chasing thing. I don't even know if I if he is inherently red pill himself or if he's just wild. And like I said, rap music tends to be red pill. So you can't go wrong with a rapper most of the time. Yeah. But to be honest, I can't really speak on him. He's he's something else. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of controversy. Like I, I'm, I'm looking at the Instagram feeds and I'm like, what's the big deal about this guy? Like, I mean, I heard the name before, but I was just like, why is, why is this a big deal? But I guess I'm going to find out cause he's going to be on the show pretty soon. No sure. Yeah. I'll definitely be listening to that. I yeah. mean, you know, congrats to fresh and fit on that. That is, a, I mean, either way you look at it as a I, um, celebrity. I liked, uh, like, yeah, I think you're right about that. Like, it sounds nice. It's it's easier for like girls, I think, for women uh, in general to get behind like a Def Leppard or get behind like a, a Journey or something like that. You know, get behind a, a a song that is like kind of what we would otherwise say is is very blue pill, um, because there's that there's a wider appeal I think for that rather than like say like yes women you know name your favorite Iron Maiden song like most women don't know you know <laughs> name your favorite Slayer song like they they're not gonna know that right right but like it's there's so, but then again like you ask women in right now like well who's your favorite rapper you know what's 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 your favorite song right yeah well then the other thing is women are in, they're very much aware of their own nature it takes certain mm -hmm. mediums of entertainment to bring it out i'd say one is rap and one is comedy whether it's being aware on a subconscious level or it's just being honest with yourself if you consume that form of entertainment one of the reasons i like and i discussed this with my writing partner when, when we were talking about doing a red pill themed dialogue in a film we decided on horror or comedy is best because it becomes digestible at that point if it's done in, in a dramatic context that's where you're going to have issues with cancel culture and that's where it's just also hard to gain sympathy for a character that is uh alpha or a red pill but comedy I, I say this all the time where would comedy be without without some sort of red pill acknowledgement of uh, the differences between male and female nature. I don't think there'd be a single Chris Rock bit that I liked if mm -hmm. he didn't touch on some of those subjects. Um, and also speak on the behalf of men in a way that calls out female nature and you hear thunderous applause and laughter from women in the audience because that is a time where everybody takes a break, goes to see the Chris Rock show and takes a break comes down off their high horse of, you know, feminism, this and male nature, that, and just laughs at like, you know, we could all be a little ridiculous sometimes. And we are inherently different and it makes it kind of hard. Can't live with them. Can't live without them. Rap and comedy will do that. Also, I mean, women know what rap lyrics are about. They're shaking ass to these songs in the club. Why are mm -hmm. they doing that? Instead of every woman on the planet being like, I'm not listening to Tupac. I'm not listening to Biggie. Did you hear what the fuck this guy said? It's because that is the occasion when it's time to laugh and when it's time to dance is when it's like, all mm -hmm. right, I'll half acknowledge, you know, female nature. Funny enough, and in, in the same way, I didn't realize when you were staying in town, my stepmother has heard your shit and, and, and has listened to a lot of your shit uh -oh. and kind of <laughs> says, kind of says, I kind of wanted to meet him, but I kind of didn't because I'm a woman. And it's just, I, I, she was one of those types that mm -hmm. like, I don't want to admit that most of what he says is true. Right. You know, right. it was one of that's those my, situations. That's my opener. Like that's my joke. I think in, um, I think I did put it in my second book. I, I, I had already done the first book and I had a guy hit me up and said, you know, I gave my, the, the book or the, I was reading the book. My girlfriend snatched it out of my hands and she says, no, what is this? A rational male. You know, I'll, I'll be the judge of that. Right. You know, she goes and she reads it for half a week or whatever, comes back right. and talks to him. She says, everything in this book is 100 percent true and you shouldn't know any of it. <laughs> yeah. they, they want to maintain sort of like the the ignorance of most guys. And I, I and I get that. I, I, I'm seeing in the chat here. Yeah. I, a lot of people say, you know, um, Patrice O'Neill. Yeah. I, I, and I ah, recognize Patrice O'Neill. I've, I've used Patrice O'Neill. In fact, if you go and you look in uh, book four, I quote Patrice O'Neill in there. Uh, especially the part where um, he was talking about. Uh, do you remember that that bit where he says, um, "You know, ladies, if you didn't have a, if you didn't have a vagina, like how would you please your man? How would you keep a man interested or, or around?" Right, and so. Every and, and he knows this is going to happen, right? He knows this, and remember, this is like in the '90s, right? So this is like yeah. the late '90s, maybe early 2000s. 
And he's like, he knows they're going to say this. Oh, I, I'd give up the ass. Um, I give him blowjobs, blah, blah. He goes, do you see what you just did there? <laughs> he's like, you just reduced yourself to a series of holes. Exactly. <laughs> and I, I've used that so many times. But, but even the women in the audience are busting up laughing exactly. because they understand the incongruency. They understand the, 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 um, the cognitive dissonance that goes along with that. Yeah, we do. And you're right. When you get into and that's one of the reasons why I, I, I'm glad you made that point. I'm glad they brought this up in the chat. Because that's what humor does. It allows us to sort of, it should anyways, good humor should allow us to say, you know what? Yeah, you you got me. You know, let's laugh about it. And, you know, you'll keep up, you know, keep up appearances when you leave the, when you leave the comedy club, but you can laugh about it and you can let those appearances down and we can, you know, a guy's a guy and a woman's a woman and we understand each other's innate natures right there. Now, when we go back online or we go out to, you know, uh, on, on Twitter or whatever, then suddenly we became this, you know, cancel culture, you know, woke mob. But in the club or for the moment that for the 20 minutes or 30 minutes that you're watching a, a, this skit, right, on, on Save a Ho, you can, you can laugh at that. And now that's another thing I think is really good. And this is why I wanted to get involved with you was that I think it's even accessible for women. I think that women can watch this and go, yeah, that's why Fresh and Fit have a big show. You go and you look at the, the shows where, where, where Myron and Fresh are there and they're talking about some really, you know, in-depth subjects and everything like that. You know, maybe they've got 3,000 live viewers. You put four, five, six, ten 10 girls on that show and suddenly it jumps up to 10 or 12,000 viewers because there's that want for that, certainly the indignation, but it's also that kind of like wanting for that back and forth, like. I don't want to say combat, but it's like they drop appearances for a moment so that everybody can sort of come together, and it's it's entertaining. That's why it's that's why it's a huge show right now. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I was just getting lost listening to that for a minute. But <laughs> Patrice O'Neill, I know we both discovered Patrice O'Neill after he was gone. I started binging his shit and then see R.I.P. in the comments. I'm like, no. I was like, no way, no. He was he was brilliant. Like I said, when it's time to laugh and when it's time to dance, that's the one time everybody just kind of yeah. says. Okay, let's take a night off from being upset about everything. Personally, one of the things I don't understand about cancel culture is I would have thought and, you know, take it from a 25 year old, but I would have thought we long ago made it past shock value and people mm -hmm. being shocked and claiming that a record was outrageous. And let's put the parental advisory sticker on the records and the movies are too violent. It seemed like most of that happened in the 90s after NWA, after Public Enemy, you know, after all the horrific, you know, bloody horror movies and yeah, bloody awesome. action movies. I don't know how we came back to this, but basically what I do know is when people have nothing else in life, the one thing they can at least have is a, is a very interesting perspective, right? I mean, when you have nothing, you're broke, you have no accomplishments of your own. The one thing you can have is this wonderfully interesting perspective where you are the authority of pointing out what seems to be right or wrong with our culture, because now you have a voice. And what I mostly see um, not only women, but a little bit of everybody doing these days is just collecting issues as if they just like picked it out of a bunch and said like, I'll subscribe to this or I'll choose to get angry about that or I can adopt this issue and now I have something that's righteous to speak up for. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a shame because none of it comes from any true calling to that issue. Like, you know, a red pill narrative isn't even the biggest issue uh, to me, there aren't many issues that I get behind or, or a blue pill narrative or a feminist narrative isn't even the biggest issue that speaks to me. I don't go around adopting issues. The one issue that speaks to me, not like I'd campaign for it or anything, but the one thing I'll always speak up in a conversation about is child development. It's directly related to a lot of what we talk about in a red pill setting because if you don't understand male and female nature, you don't understand what's wrong about the way we interact with each other, then that kind of leads down a direct path to how many kids get so messed up. And I came from a really mm. fucked up home because of things like this, having a beta father, having a, a liberated wild mother who just like was wilding mm. out whenever there were issues because she didn't know how to handle her issues. This directly leads to uh, ill child development. And it's, I mean, it's, it's traumatizing shit that people don't realize is wrong when they're kids, then they have to deal with it later on in life. And I think that's the biggest misfortune of the narrative that tells women right now, do what you want, sleep with who you want to party when you want to. Do you have three kids? Do you have four? It doesn't really matter. Do you have a man? Do you not have a man? Do you have a job? Do you not have a job? There's no reason to take accountability for anything. You can never be wrong. And this will never have any negative effects on you or your children. That is that I got to take issue with because that's how, you know, it's amazing. My brothers and I turned out all right because of the shit we grew up with. Horrific. The shit my cousins grew up with. Horrific because all the women in the family were nuts. Most of the men in the family were beta. And this is what happens.